I wanted to show you here the Vargas grids. You can see I print them out on transparency. This is how I prefer to use them. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see the name of the grid. So in this case, this is a, a V grid phi, which also is a golden section rectangle. Now I'm going to go through the golden section series here. So we have your basic square. Then we're going to have a root phi. And you can see that each rectangle has its own vibration. You see the, the space in between uh, here where it's not in here? I mean, there is a space, but it's much smaller. So this is just much uh, larger space in there. So each one has its own vibe, and I want you to pay attention to that as I go through these. You'll see them clearly. Obviously, look how clear and ordered the squares are. Your root 2. Your root 3, which is a little bit of a longer rectangle. A lot of sculptures are built in a root 3. Here's your root 4. You can see how clean this vibe is becoming. Here we have a root 4. And a root 4 is constructed of two squares. So if we come back and we look at our our square Vargas grid, you can see here how they're the same height. They're actually the same width um, as well. And the reason why is because they're two squares. But you can see that the armatures inside the little squares are very different than when we have it as two squares. So the root four is a different rectangle even though it's constructed of two squares. And then we'll finish the golden section series off with a root five. These are often used for standing portraits. Um, and if you double them up, <clears throat> They'll, they work really, really great for portraits as well. So when we look at this printout, it will tell us what rectangles go with what subjects. And you can use this as a rough guide. Obviously, a root 5 down here doesn't really go well with a portrait, although if you overlap a root 5, it becomes really, really nice to use in a portrait. So this chart really is about using uh, a rectangle that the rectangle, the, the main rectangle itself is one of these rectangles. So the dimensions of these. And you can see along here I have in this little chart uh, the square all the way down to the root 5 shape. So you can go through here. We have portraits, figures, groups, reclining, still life, floral, landscapes, seascapes, and cityscapes. Now let's say you already have a pre-bought canvas or pre-bought frame. You just look up your size and then it tells you the grid to use that corresponds to that size. So if you're doing a painting in a 16 by 20. You might want to use the Vargas grid 5, the V grid 5, because the armature in that grid will give you a gamut that relates only to these sizes. It doesn't really relate to a 20 by uh, 24. Now, another thing you want to take a look at is if you're dealing with an image that's larger than an eight and a half by eleven what you can do is come over here and just line you print it out 
and you line it up so now you have a larger Vargas grid there you go so now you have a bigger area that's a nice size little painting there a look at this and what I want to show you is that these are both V grid 5 which is your 16 uh, by 20 size rectangle or a 4 by 5 or an 8 by 10 and so if you notice that these have a vertical thrust these have a horizontal thrust if you're looking at the rectangles if you're looking at these interesting uh, curves that are created when the arbitures are next to each other you can see that the spacing moves vertical but the rectangles move horizontal in this case the heart the rectangles move vertical and the spacing moves horizontal so one's a reciprocal marked with an R or in some Vargas grids they're marked with an arrow that's pointed to the side this isn't marked with anything in some Vargas grids there's an actually an arrow that points vertical um, and so these are more the, the rectangles are your portrait orientation and this one it's a landscape orientation but remind uh, remember that even though the rectangle and the armature is moving in a landscape orientation or towards you know horizontally the spaces that are created are moving you upward so these are all things you can play with to help in your composition it would be interesting if you composed the same artwork on one of these and then the same artwork on one of these and, and just look at the vibe that's created and see which one you like better. I have seen these in some of the videos that I've done. This is the gauge and the gauge is used like this. I'll take a sketch. Okay, so let me taper down here. Taper down. And what I want to do then is lay the, the gauge over top of my sketch and I want to find a major diagonal. Obviously the coffee cup, that chin, uh, chin, this uh, cheek, the angle of that nose, coffee cup, shoulder. Now when I was uh, sketching this obviously the, I think like a composer and so I'm intentionally repeating these lines so that's a very strong diagonal so what I want to do is flip this around and you can either flip it this way this way or the reciprocals which is this and this that gives you your four angles and so each of these diagonals can be seen in four different directions and if you compose with that you're going to compose about 70 to 80 percent of your artwork just using that one angle flipped four different times so let's take a look here we can see right here that this angle comes very really you know comes really uh, close to being a root phi rectangle now we could come in here and actually put it on a square if we wish to. Um, that's at a 45 degree angle. Now we might want to do that. But let's take a look at that nose. That nose. Okay, so we can look at this bottom part of the Maybe that line in the forehead is getting a little steeper. So here we are. Um, a root 5 which is really really nice I like how that line comes straight down from the forehead into the tip of the nose now so if I want to look at that line I'm going to just kind of see what what it would look like if I carried that through that's pretty steep so I mean we put the back of the, the ear let me see on this side where we come with a root 5 we could do that hairline so we could do this in an armature of a root 5 and because all armatures have a square in it then we could come up and put our square right there and so we could use a square to make part of that nose 
a root phi 5 to construct the rest. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and use the root 5 grid, which is right here. And now you can see once we add, okay, so now we have, look at all that beautiful construction already locked in. You might want to put one of these stars right here. And now we have all of this geometry on that eye. This nose is coming up through here, breaking through here, up through here, blah, blah, blah. Maybe we push that over just a wee bit. And so now at this point, we want to just anchor, uh, adjust and anchor. Right here is that coffee cup. And so now right here is this coffee cup curving up, but right here is this root 5 uh, line. And so we want to make sure that it lands on there. Right here, we have a space between where this line is and where that neck begins. So we just extend that back out extend that back a little further and come down and make sure that that line lands right here not where it is so that's the adjusting part of it here this is coming right on the edge of the center so we would just come down make it the center and then curve it um, basically follow that that root five, that root five diagonal right there we could bring the hair down right here's a nice root five and so now we're locking it into the grid and we're repeating that line, that thrust, this whole unit is a beautiful little piece of geometry. So I'm going to lock her in and actually draw her out on that root 5.